Good morning, Laura. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Warren. So good to see you here. I got started very early today and um, I had a, an amazing setup and I'm really disappointed it didn't work, but I was trying to set up multi cameras and uh, come to find out my iPhone wouldn't allow any sound through. So uh, we're gonna do this from my phone, which is, you know, not the best way, but you know, it's what, what we've got to work with. So good morning, Chris. Glad you could be here. I got on just a couple of minutes early so that uh, we could let a few people jump on. But it's 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And uh, the video will be up for a while so people can always go back and view it. I'm gonna do a few questions this morning. And if anybody has any questions, you know, uh, just shout out but I'm also going to do a little demo with some cold wax. So I thought that might be exciting for everybody. Um, so this morning I had uh, asked earlier in the week if anybody had any questions that they wanted to uh, know a little bit more about. So uh, this is from Joe Wyka. He asked, uh, what inspires an artist? What impacts you the most? So on the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts, they had uh, some questions, some interview questions, and they, those were part of the questions they asked as well. So I hope you'll go and, and view those, but basically what inspires me are any um, natural objects. I'm just drawn to nature, and everybody has their different um, things that impact them. It's usually something that we can't pinpoint exactly. It could be just the way the light is hitting form. It could be, um, you know, a, a moment in time that we've captured in our memory or uh, in our sight or by camera. And we want to replicate that emotion on canvas or in any other means, you know, photography or um, so it just depends on the artist and how they want to express themselves. But I express myself through paint and I like um, usually the last light of day is, is my favorite time of day. Uh, I just feel like it calms me. It gives me peace. I can reflect back on my day and the light changes across the sky and it's always different. So you never get bored. You know, there's always subject matter there and it doesn't matter where you are. You can always see the last light of day. So I like to capture different areas, different places and get that light so that I can um, in turn replicate it on canvas. So, um, hello Ruthie, hello Nancy. I see you guys are joining on. Thanks for being here. Um, so I'm just going through some questions. Uh, Joe Wyka also asked, um, what content do I usually uh, select? And again, just back to nature. Uh, but for most artists, it usually starts as like a learning phase and then it develops into uh, something more goal-oriented. Uh, at least that's the way it was for me. I know many of you probably uh, started because you saw another artist that was doing something that you liked and so you wanted to kind of go down that same path. Uh, that's how it started for me as well. I wanted to paint landscapes, so I sought an artist out that was doing landscapes in a, in a way that I liked, um, that appealed to me. So I started following that artist and, um, you know, not necessarily copying them, but, you know, copying is the way that we learn. So I started replicating their methods and learning from them. And that's how most people begin. And then you start developing more of your own style and then you kind of divert into something else, or hopefully you do if you're growing and if you're painting enough, then you're really going to grow and, um, start doing some other things. Uh, he also asked the rhythm of my art, how painting fits into the routine of your day. So I'm going to go into that a little bit, but that kind of plays into Brandy McDermott's uh, question. She said, how to manage products or structure your days for a continuous or not creative process. Um, so 
the way I like to approach that, and I, I'm sorry, I have to break off for just a second and turn off. There's some noise background, so hold on one second. Okay, so in this digital age, there's all kinds of electronics, and sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes it's not. Uh, anyway, so Brandy's question was, how do you manage proje projects or structure your days for a continuous or not creative process? So uh, I said to uh, break it down into smaller time segments. So the way you do that with for a painter is you gather your content. So in other words, uh, if I wanna go out today and take some pictures, I may find something that I wanna paint later. So I will put that kind of in a folder, you know, whether it's on my camera or whether it's, you know, in a, printed out and I put it in an actual folder. Um, I will actually uh, save those. And in fact, one that I'm gonna be looking at today, I found this. Uh, if you guys can see that I found this in a folder when I was getting ready for this project and that photo is probably 20 years old so uh, we actually compile things over time and just because you don't get to it today uh, you could get to it 10 years from now 20 years from now those ideas they actually never go away so hang on to those because as you progress in your painting practices or whatever your art endeavors are, as you progress, you're gonna actually learn more so that you can approach that project. You may have been timid when you first uh, took the photo to actually uh, tackle it, but eventually you'll you'll get there. Um, so, you know, gather your content. Uh, oh, Pinterest is always a great place. I always save images there. Uh, like, consider it like a storyboard. So you can save your color schemes, you can um, compile images from other artists that inspire you. Uh, it's just a great place to uh, get inspiration. And so those are of you that have a hard time being inspired, you may feel like looking at other people's art is, um, is stealing from them or that you're going to somehow subliminally start to paint like them. You know, whatever, whatever your holdback is, don't think of it that way. Think of it as a way of um, gathering data for your brain so that you can be inspired and, and learn new ways to approach a subject matter. That's what's great about other artists. You know, we, we get ideas from them, but we can come up with our own ideas if we see more of those ideas out there. Um, the second way I break up my... Um, my day is I will gather up my supplies. So a lot of times you don't have all your supplies together. You know, sometimes when you sit down in the studio, you're like ready to jump into the painting, but you don't even have everything available to you. So go ahead and get those supplies uh, together. And if you work during the day, uh, after dinner at nighttime, that's a great time to kind of look at your supplies, see what you need to get, go run some errands. Um, run to the local art store or order online, whatever is more convenient for you. So that is also a, a way to break up your painting practice. Um, spending some time researching those tools and supplies, seeing what other people are using, asking questions about what is the best paint to use or the best uh, paintbrush to use. So those are good ways to spend your time on your, um, on your art. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're... Um, you know, not investing in your time and your painting practices. Um, then the third one is to prepare your space. So in my studio, I work in my dining room and um, it gets a little crowded in here, especially at dinner time. So uh, we've actually added an extra table in my dining room, which is right here behind me here. Uh, if you guys can see this. So it's just a long table that I added right behind my dining room table, which is right here next to me. Um, so that way I can clear off the dining room table pretty quickly, throw things on the other table, especially if they're still wet and I don't want to really move them around too much. And that way I am ready and prepared at most any given time because 
um, as you know, you know, life is still going on around you. You still have dinner to make. You still have people in your family to feed. So think about the practicality of your workspace and just keep it prepared so that you're ready to paint at any given time. Um, the fourth thing is block out time in your day. Even if you don't paint, try to find a way to, uh, you know, if it's 15 minutes every day, either listen to a podcast or, uh, you know, learn about a, a new artist and how they're doing things. Just spend a little bit of time every day and all that actually will accumulate into a great base knowledge for you to have a foundation on so that you can start your painting career or your artistic career, whatever that may be. Um, the fifth one is to draw or sketch. Even if you're a photographer or you are a potter, you know, find some time to draw out your ideas, sketch them. Uh, keep a notebook or a journal. I actually should take that advice a little bit more. I um, I don't keep a journal, but I keep a lot of notebooks around the house. Like I have a lot of these. And whenever I have an idea, I jot it down. And it's nice to go back through that for you know several years because you forget these things. And it's a good reminder or a good refresher about what you were thinking at that specific time. You know, even if you're not great at drawing, even if you, um, you know, just put some color down with some uh, colored pencils or, uh, you know, markers or whatever, just to give your um, idea kind of a storyboard so that you can go back and say, oh yeah, I remember I was there on this day and I was thinking about this and maybe even write down the emotions that were evoked from that moment in time. Um, another thing is to do a color study. That's kind of the same thing. You know, if you write some notes, maybe put some color notes next to it so that, you know, you know what colors you were kind of thinking. And the colors actually evoke a mood also. So think about those colors that reflect what you're thinking about at that time. Um, so another way that I break up my time is, so if, if I'm working during the day, and I do work, by the way, I uh, have a, a day job, so if I go to work and I come home at night and I have a few minutes before dinner, I may prepare my studio space so that I can paint that evening. So after dinner, uh, I'll clean up and then I'll come back to the studio for a couple hours. Some of you may say, well, that's a long day. It may be a long day, but once you sit down, you'll find that painting actually is very soothing and spending that time and not not being rushed and hurried about it, but just actually contemplating, even if it's just looking at your notes, uh, looking at your sketches, researching your supplies, you'll find that that gets you back in the mood. And that was one of Brandy's questions. She said, you know, how do you, how do you uh, structure your day for a continuous or not creative process? Well, all of these things will get you back in the mood and, and you'll actually start creating again. Um, if you will do some color notes uh, or even like a um, color wheel, if you'll do something like that, then playing with the paint and actually using your tools, understanding them, will get you more comfortable for uh, actually painting with them. And that is inspiring to me. You know, when I feel comfortable with my tools and I understand how they work or I understand how my paints are going to react to each other, my colors are going to mix, and I feel comfortable with that process, that's a wonderful place to be in, you know, any type of um, professional line of artistic uh, career that you're in because then when you feel comfortable with your tools, then you can just create and you're not fumbling over trying to discover something. The discovery process is fun too, but, uh, you know, being comfortable with those things is a, is a great place to be. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to stop there with some of the questions other than I'm going to get to, uh, Joe Wyka, uh, asked back again, he said, you know, how does this fit into your routine? So, I'm gonna show you guys how I kind of warm up a little bit. Sometimes I'll even do exercises. I know that sounds crazy, but you know, if you're stiff from working during the day and your shoulders are tight, sometimes I will come in and do some, a little bit of yoga, some breathing exercises um, that will kind of calm my mind so that I can get ready and get prepared. 
kind of like getting ready for this video. You know, I was running around, uh, you know, it was getting a little warm in the house. And so, you know, I was a little under pressure, so I might've been stressed a little bit, but, uh, you know, doing something to just breathe, calm down, you know, get your mind in order for painting, that's always helpful. So I'm gonna take my camera and I'm gonna move you guys over so you can see my workspace a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna switch this camera around. All right, so this is my setup here. And I'm gonna position you here. If you guys have any questions during this process, I'll try to answer them for sure. But we have a short amount of time here, so I just wanna show you how I would approach a painting. Now this is a, this is a really, um, quick process that I'm going to show you here. Uh, I might lengthen this process a little bit over time, but I would normally uh, start with an underpainting on this. And since we don't have a whole lot of time for it to dry down, what I might do is add a little cold wax to it just so that it will um, be a little bit tackier. So I've got some cold wax down here and I've got this little palette knife and I'm gonna mix in some of this transparent red oxide with it. And I'm probably gonna need a little bit more than that. I think you guys can see this workspace. I can see it on my screen. If you guys can't see it, just holler out. Okay, so this is the underpainting process. Now, everybody's underpainting process is a little different. Some may take more time than others. But um, I'm just going to do a quick tone over my canvas, basically. And this is a squeegee that I got from uh, Cold Wax Academy. I love this tool. This is my new painting tool. And if you guys don't have one, I would highly recommend it. It can do some amazing things. Uh, it takes a little getting used to, but I, I do like it. So what I did was I, I lengthened out my paint here, as you can see, so that when I pick it up with this squeegee, it will actually um, lay across the edge of this in a pretty even manner. So if I pick it up on here, then I can lay it across here in some um, wide strokes. And that gives it pretty good coverage. Now I am using one of those just cheap canvases from you know any of these local um, art stores like Michaels or Hobby Lobby just because the cold wax works really well with it because it has a little bit of texture to it. So I'm gonna get a little bit more and apply it to those areas that didn't get any coverage. So if you're working on a larger canvas, you know, this could take a little bit of time, right? So this is something good to do uh, if, if you're going to be painting a lot or if you have several projects coming up, this would be good to uh, tone several canvases in an afternoon or so. You know, spend an evening doing this. And, you know, if you like repetition, this is a, a nice way to calm the spirit at night, I think. You're not thinking too much about your project, just trying to get something on a canvas, you know, get some paint on there. So the thing I like about this is that it doesn't have to be really even. You know, I'm not too worried about it being uh, perfect because I kind of like to work in, in an abstract process. So now this is not going to dry. Uh, you can let it dry over a day or two. It just depends on the humidity level in your area. But if you put it on pretty thinly, which this squeegee will allow you to do, it should tack up, and if you start early in the morning, by the afternoon, it should tack up pretty good. All right, so looking at my picture here, let's see what kind of time we have on this, guys. Um, looking at my picture here, I wanna break this up into different sections. So I wanna start with my darks, of course and then I might uh, go with my lights right next to my darks and then work into the clouds or work into the water here. 
So one of the things you could do is mix up your paints. You know, go ahead and pre-mix your colors. Some of you go ahead and, and start diving into your painting without pre-mixing, and that's a great process. Uh, for me, I like to go ahead and pre-mix just so that I'm pretty confident about the colors that I'm using. And Wendy Oslin asked about um, values. How can you, how do you check your values? Well, there's a couple of ways you can check values. Of course, this is a glossy photo. Usually I would recommend doing a matte photo um, because you can, you can tell your values a little bit better. But this is a value finder, which you can use to check your values. So what you would do is like, let's say this tree line, of course we see on here, it's pretty dark and it's just black, flat black. A uh, photo can be deceiving that way. Of course, it flattens the images, so you have to be cautious about that. But we would normally say that that's in the darkest value range. Um, your lightest lights, of course, are gonna be in the lightest value ranges, which are here. Um, but this is, this is a good tool that you can use. Another tool that you can use is by um, taking your camera phone uh, on your phone and turning it to black and white and looking at the image that way. And that's a really good way to check your values as well. Um, you wanna squint your eyes. If you're out planner painting, you wanna squint your eyes and just let as little light as possible in and then you can see your values a little bit better that way also. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of trying to train my eyes to see value. It, I don't think it's uh, an easy thing, but it's certainly something you can work to do. So I'm I'm working to get my dark color for my bridge painting here, and um, that's going to be my darkest dark. And then my lightest light would be something like uh, white, and I might put in a little of this transparent red oxide and um, some of the cold wax, of course. And it's looking pretty peachy, so I might add a little bit of yellow. So there I have my dark and my light. Now if I wanna work abstractly, which I, I typically do, then um, I wanna take my squeegee. I'm gonna clean off this other color. I'm just taking a paper towel and wiping it off. You can use a baby wipe or anything like that. So I'm gonna take this dark color and I'm going to start to mark in where I want my trees and my bridge. And I love how this tool can actually um, remove paint as well as apply paint. And you can actually blend paint with this tool also. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this light color and I'm gonna put it next to this tree line, and this time I'm gonna come this way with it. And you can actually blend on the canvas with this tool. I'm not much of a blender on the canvas, but if you like to do that sort of thing, you can actually do that with this squeegee. It's kind of a neat, a neat tool. You can also um, remove some paint if you need to. So if I pick it up a couple of times, I can run across the surface that way. And if I wanna smooth some of this out, I can gently rub across and then it'll kind of blend everything together. Very similar to a palette knife. But the flexibility of this uh, allows for a little bit more um, uh, flow across the surface of your paint than a, a palette knife does. So I want to see if anybody has any questions because we only have a few more minutes. Is there anything, <laughs> Laura says, how, how it comes together so quickly. It, it does come together pretty quickly, but I've, I guess because I've been doing this for a long time. I kind of know, you know, what what I need to do. So I'm gonna um, put a little bit of sky color in here so you guys can see that. So I just mixed in a little bit of blue with that sky color and some wax, of course. 
And again, I'm gonna use my handy dandy little tool here that I love so much. And this time I'm gonna come up this way. And we'll pick up some more paint. Now this um, is starting to get a little too straight right there, so I might soften that edge just by kind of pushing the edge of that squeegee down right there. A couple of questions, where is the bridge? So the bridge in the photo is right above the tree line right there. So when I go to put it in, I'll probably just put in some of this pink right there to uh, show the difference between the skyline and that tree line and the water line there. And why do you use that specific color for your underpainting? So I like, so Tara wants me to keep on going. Um, I will keep painting while I talk, how about that? Um, I like to use this uh, color because, for my underpainting, because it adds warmth to the painting. As you can see, I've got a lot of dark, which is, are very cool colors in here, and the underpainting just allows for a little bit of warmth. So here I mixed up a little bit more blue, so it's a little bit darker there, as you can see. And then um, why don't we put in a little bit of the watercolor so you guys can see that. I'm gonna add a little touch of red in there, maybe a little bit more. And I'm gonna add some yellow, so it's a little bit um, peachish colored. I wanna get something similar to this color here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the red and a little bit more of that transparent red ochre. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of blue just to kind of muddy things up. Okay, so here I would take this color I created and just come in a vertical motion and this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, just play around with your paint and see what happens. It's always great to see um, just what it, what it actually can do if you don't follow a specific guide. Um, so I'm gonna make this tree line in the water underneath that base of trees there. So I mixed up a little dark in that um, color that I created for the water. So I'll do the same thing with the tree line and come in a vertical motion like this. I kind of like how that's looking. What do you guys think? <laughs> Talking while painting. Yes, it is a good right brain, left brain challenge for sure. So of course you can continue to play with that, um, but I just thought I'd show you guys how I like to play in the studio. Well, if you guys don't have any more questions for me, I think I'm gonna be signing off here soon. Um, thank you, Laura, for having me. Thank you, Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts for today. And I hope you guys had a happy Thanksgiving and uh, happy holidays. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.